Donc, chers collègues, bonjour. Au nom de Re Renouveau Démocratie, je vous souhaite la bienvenue et vous remercie de votre participation ainsi que de votre fidélité. Euh, donc, jusqu'à présent, vous êtes plus de 3000 collègues à nous suivre euh, depuis le début du lancement de nos e-conférences. Merci infiniment euh, de votre fidélité et de votre soutien. Euh, je voudrais aussi vous informer que les replays des conférences euh, seront bientôt disponibles et nous allons les diffuser à tout le personnel. Donc, ça va se faire euh, au plus tard la semaine prochaine. Merci beaucoup. Donc, je tiens également à remercier Grégory Gemine d'avoir répondu favorablement à notre invitation. Donc, aujourd'hui, nous allons parler du New Ways of Working. Quelles sont les origines, la légitimation et les enjeux? C'est pourquoi nous avons fait appel à Grégory. Grégory est chercheur, docteur en sciences politiques et sociales au sein du LENTIC. Le LENTIC, c'est le laboratoire d'études sur les nouvelles formes de travail, l'innovation et le changement de l'Université de Liège. Grégory est spécialisé dans le processus des changements NWOW, donc le New Ways of Working. Il va nous partager son expérience et ainsi nous aider à mieux comprendre et anticiper tous les enjeux qui sont en cours avec la nouvelle stratégie HR. Et comme ça, on pourra vous défendre au mieux. On attend également votre participation active et les questions, les doutes que vous vous posez par rapport à cette nouvelle stratégie. Donc, je vous informe que la conférence se tiendra en anglais. Vous pourrez poser vos questions en français. Donc, Grégory maîtrise parfaitement le français et l'anglais. Et donc, pour tous les aspects politiques, nos actions syndicales, là, je vais laisser la parole à Cristiano Sebastiani, qui est le président euh, de Renouveau et Démocratie, et qui va vous exposer euh, nos, nos futures actions et politiques. Merci beaucoup. Et bonne... thank, thank you, Dikra. Um, I think, uh, Gregory, that uh, we could have never chosen a better moment for organizing this meeting. You are just in the middle of a storm around in the Commission. Uh, the decision on uh, building policies has been challenged not only by trade unions, but uh, lastly by 13 director generals, recalling some basic principles to be applied. Uh, this decision to send a note, even if it's so far, uh, I would say, secret note, the note is not known. Uh, but everyone knows that uh, there is a really uh, very bad feeling about uh, that the, the policy of the Commission, not only inside the staff, but also at the man man management level. Um, what is going on is a sort of a battle against two priorities, uh, changing of building policies, uh, switching to uh, dynamic offices, open space, uh, whatever you want to call them, and telework. So those who are in favor of telework, like the, the staff, a large majority of the staff are in favor of telework, uh, actually are in a way uh, considering the dynamic office, especially with the ratio is now foreseen that we will have uh, something of between uh, five and six posts for 10 people, uh, will be in a way the guarantee that telework cannot be uh, put in question, because if there is not enough seat, you must telework. Uh, those who are against telework uh, and also against the dynamic office are challenging the approach on the building policies because they consider that once you switch to dynamic office to reduction of the post, in a way you are imposing telework to the staff. And some managers are still against telework. I mean, the culture of this institution before and it was not really in favor of the work. We are fighting for it just we are really keen on having their some of them are totally open minds, some other not. The pandemic has changed the mind also those who have never teleworked before and they are now really uh, enjoying telework. The institution has shown to be able to work even if 100% of staff on telework. Uh, so there are these two priorities, they seem to be uh, contradictory. And there are also a change of culture who is introduced by our commissioner, who is preaching uh, leading by example, culture, culture of trust. Uh, everyone agrees. Um, I keep on saying that uh, perhaps I'm the last one to believe on this uh, uh, 
uh, on this principle because actually in the normal life in the services, this change doesn't appear to be really uh, implemented. Uh, when it comes to uh, leading by example for for uh, buildings and for uh, offices, uh, we have been recalling again and again all the studies showing that uh, manager must really lead by examples. It's not acceptable that you reserve a very good and uh, luxury office for yourself, and then you you serve a dynamic office to your staff. It's not acceptable that you decide everything upon and then you just send the results of your discussion of the sharing of the office to the staff. And is even uh, more unacceptable that the Commission a few months ago has adopted a communication on which I quote two way communication before and during the implementation process is vital. Consultative approach to design the new working space requires good process for dialogue and taking on board feedback. Staff affected should be highly involved in the process, including expressing their needs for the workplace, helping to make decisions about the final design. They might call upon relevant staff representative organization to assist in this process. Uh, we were so happy to see this decision and to see that our request was really duly endorsed by the Commission. Uh, what we see today is totally the opposite. The last example that we have is the communication sent to the staff of one directorate general on which the director general informed the staff. We, the, with all the managers, we have visited the building, we have decided the best sharing of the workspace without mentioning, we have, we have reserved for ourselves private offices. Please find the plan on which you will find your dynamic office. And all these colleagues have just got this news through an email. So it's totally in contradiction with the principle that has been announced, not only by us, but also approved by the Commission. Uh, so staff is a bit lost because they are afraid that if we challenge too much dynamic office, we risk to put in danger telework. Uh, and those who really want to telework consider that uh, the dynamic office is in a way uh, a price to be paid in a sort of trade-off organized. But those who don't want to telework are totally afraid to spend their week all time in dynamic office. Uh, and then uh, this consultation is not organized. And finally, there is also a big concern that we have. There is not actually a governance at the central level. There is no one in charge. Uh, the pretext is that the director general knows more than ever and more than anyone else the situation of the staff. So we, we are facing a situation in which each and every director general decides whatever he or she considers to be suitable for the staff. So we have with this no policy at the central level. So we have director general who has decided to go themselves on open space, orders that has even announced that they will res resign if they don't have their own uh, private office. Uh, some are uh, reserving private offices for directors and not for head of units. Some others also for head of units. Uh, and then the staff is totally lost and they don't know who is in charge of something. Uh, you have seen also on the newspaper uh, different articles about the building policies. There is also concerns at the political level in Belgium that the commission is uh, uh, renouncing to several buildings. Uh, all the restaurants and cafes in the district are afraid that no one will uh, come back to the to the office. And staff are waiting. Uh, um, what we, we will have uh, as a negotiation, we want to, to, to keep on board the best possible products around because we don't consider that the commission is something unique. Uh, we must rely and build our position on the best experience around us. That's why we are inviting the best possible experts, and you are, uh, of course, among them. And so we like to listen from you your experiences when it comes to change the way of working. Uh, eventually, your suggestion, uh, based on what I just mentioned, uh, if you, you see margin of maneuver, what kind of proposal we can put forward, uh, what kind of concern we are going to face, because it's clear that the, the feeling of the staff is really bad. Uh, and we must uh, keep on building uh, on the mood of the African pandemic, and they deserve to see them study later, like it is not the case of always today. We will get after the questions from our colleagues in, in the chat. Uh, again, like Dick has mentioned, question can also be raised in French if you prefer. 
to do that. And now, uh, thank you again for your participation. I leave the floor to you, Jerem. Thank you, Castanio and Dikra. Thank you very much for uh, the introduction. I will first share my screen. I hope you can hear me well. You should yeah. now see my screen yeah. in full screen. Perfect. So thank you for, I would first like to begin by thanking uh, Renouveau and Democracy, Renewal and Democracy. I don't know if I can translate it uh, like that um, literally, uh, mm. but thank you for the invitation because of course it's always a pleasure for us researchers to have the opportunity to work, to, to, to share what we work on uh, with people in different kind of companies. Uh, and, and institutions. And so uh, I'm Gregory, as Dikra told you, I'm a researcher at the University of Liège. And maybe uh, what I can uh, specify is that I did my thesis on new ways of working. And concretely, what I did is that I joined firms being involved in processes of transformation, of recreating new spaces, of uh, implementing telework policies that was before the COVID, of course, and things like that. And uh, I, I, I participated in the meetings of these firms as an external observer. So I was there in the meeting and I was just taking notes and, and noting what was happening. And so that was a very insightful experience. And this is how we collected data on several cases of new ways of working. Um, and what I would like to do in this presentation is to first uh, kind of explain what new ways of working is uh, because everything that Cristiano has introduced um, and everything the, the challenges that you face now can be summarized as uh, an attempt from the European Commission to introduce some sort of new ways of working. Now the interesting question is okay but what does that mean new ways of working and it's a very interesting interesting one because yesterday I was uh, also involved in a conference and the organizer uh, be, before starting the conference, ask the participants, what does it mean to you, new ways of working? And there was that, such a lot of words, but there was one that I really liked. It was like gibberish or, or charabia in French. Uh, so something that doesn't really mean anything. And, uh, and I really like this answer because after doing years of research on the topic, I also came to the same conclusion that new ways of working doesn't mean anything uh, really. And that's, that is kind of its strength, uh, it's the, the, the value of the, of, the, of the label and wow, new ways of working is that you can put kind of whatever you want behind it and, uh, and it will still work. And so that's kind of why it's useful. I think it's interesting to have this, this attitude to not trying to understand new ways of working and Cristiano also used the word, we are lost now. I think it's okay and normal to be lost in the process. We've seen that in old firms, committing to new ways of working because basically you said, okay, we want a new building with new kind of offices, daily working and, and no one really knows how to do that, what it means, what are the implications and so on and so on. So I think it's, it's, it's really interesting to try to, not to understand new ways of working, but rather to, 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 to admit that it's something that will always remain ambiguous because it's a long-term project, it takes time to create new spaces, to, to implement new policies in organizations. And so uh, it's okay if, it, by, by definition, new ways of working is ambiguous, it will take time and no one can know for sure how you are going to work in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years. So this is kind of the first message that I wanted to, to send to you. It's, it's okay if new ways of working remains some something a bit strange and not really com understandable, I would say. Still in the, in the presentation today, what I wanted to do with you is to come back on where, where does it come from? This kind of, we could say this fashion, this trend of having new offices, having open spaces and, 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 and this remote working thing. Uh, so I, I will tackle the subject a bit uh, differently that what you can read if you go on the internet for example if you tap new ways of working you will have a lot of so-called definitions but that are not really to me con uh, convincing and i will come back on on this question more in a historical perspective where does it come from so the origins then i will discuss a lot about legitimation legitimation to me is a crucial issue because what does that mean that means how do we uh, do we move from the idea of new ways of working 
okay, we want a new building, okay, we want new spaces, we want a teleworking policy, fine, but how do we move from the ID to the actual implementation, to the actual new workspace, and, and what is the, the, the travel, the process to get there? And I will use a case that I've been studying so that um, I, have, uh, I, I will have a concrete example uh, on which I will, um, I will rely for the presentation, and then I will come back on the challenges, because that was a request from, uh, from uh, the Nouveau and Democracy, of the challenges of the people who are evolving in these kind of environments, okay? So, uh, I, I, I've seen already some things in the chat, but I will answer the question later, of course. So the origins of new ways of work, it's very interesting when we, when we look at the origins of new ways of working to see that it's not new at all. And um, again, I will present this kind of like a story. Uh, in, in, in 1996, so that was 25 years ago, we have the, what could be identified as the first experience of new ways of working, and it is a Dutch insurance company that was called Interpolis. It doesn't exist anymore. I think it was, it was merged or something. I think the, the firm now is, uh, is being acquired by another and so on. But at, uh, in 1996, Interpolis faces a concrete problem. They want to merge just eight work sites into a single building. So that's 2,500 workers, so that's a lot of people, and they want to bring them together in the building. Uh, and when they are thinking about this project, they realize that in some departments, uh, like public relations, some people are, some people, sorry, are almost never there. And for example, this is the most extreme case, the public relations occupy the workspace um, for, um, for only 10% of their working time. So that means that on average, these people are there 10% of the time and 90% of the time, their office is empty, their desk is not occupied. And so they are working with a consultant, uh, uh, which is named Eric Veldun, and he's, he's still active as a consultant. If you, if you search for his name, you will find uh, his books and his consulting companies. And Eric Veldun says to the, the executive committee, well, look, if, you, if these people could uh, work at uh, a workstation that is not their workstation. If you would create offices for desks, sorry, not offices, desks for everyone, and everyone can sit at a different desk when it comes to the building, then you could save a lot of, a lot of space and you could fit everyone into the same building. So this is the solution to your problem. The solution to your problem is to have um, desks that are not attributed, desks that belong to everyone and at the same time that belong to no one. And this is the main reasoning behind every new way of working project. And when you speak about new ways of working and flex desk and everything starts from this, uh, usually I would say nine cases out of 10, you have this uh, basic problem. We want to fit people into a building, but there are too many people. We, we cannot recreate individual offices. So we have to share the space. And this is this was the first, one of the first experience and following this experience, uh, Eric Veldun, the consultant, started writing books in Dutch about his ideas. And if you, if you look for the books, you will find them. Kantoren bestaan niet meer, which means their offices do not exist anymore, uh, the art of working, and so on. And so he, his idea was really, uh, he really departed from a, a spa special problematic, a problematic related to space, saying, if we have a flexible culture, if we can move around and work anywhere, um, then we can improve how we use space in organization. So, of course, he's a consultant, so he has a business model behind that, and he, has, he can sell this idea to companies. So this is how it started. It, it's like, it, it, the, the, we should not forget that behind the idea of new ways of working, of course, people are living uh, out of that. But it's interesting because it really shows uh, the basic reasoning that is now to be found in uh, many new ways of working projects. Then, uh, a bit later, oh, sorry, my slide is not, oh, there it is. A bit later, we have Microsoft uh, coming into play. And Microsoft is um, communicating about the new world of work. It's interesting because new world of work, it's, it's the same abbreviation that new ways of working. It's also NWO, so it's a bit confusing. And leaders of Microsoft so they published a white paper. So there were two authors, and one of them was Bill Gates. So this is already when Bill Gates publish a paper, you can be sure that pe some people will read it, at least. And this paper is very uh, 
alarmist, uh, this paper, sorry, is very alarmist and saying now organization companies have to, to think about the new technologies because the technologies are evolving very quickly. We are in 2005, so this is 15 years ago, of course. So now this is something that we hear uh, every day, I would say, but back then it was kind of new, kind of. And so Bill Gates and his co author say, well, now we can work differently because we have new technologies that support notably uh, remote working. So I know that remote work, people would remote work before that. Okay, They would just take a, a sheet of a pile of paper and go back to home and, and do their, their, their work at home. But now because of the new technologies, you can be connected to the company while you are working at home. So this is kind of the message of, of, of this paper is to say we are entering into a new world of work. And what is really interesting is, is this dichotomy between there are old organizations that cannot adapt and that will die, basically, that's what he says, and new organizations that make the move toward new, uh, new, new, um, this new world of work. And Microsoft Netherlands, uh, it's not just a white paper, they also commit concretely to a project and then also move to a new building, implement flex desking and remote working. So here in this second era, we have the technology component. I, I, I told you the first at Interpolis, there was no really uh, no reflection about the technology. It was mostly the workspace. And there we have the workspace and the technology. The technology is coming to support the workspace changes. Then it begins to 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 take a lot of of uh, well a lot of companies become be, uh, become interested begin to look into new ways of working and we have one book in 2011 from Dirk Bale is also a Dutch consultant so a lot of things come from the the Netherlands as you can see and he is publishing a book on the in the, the singular form the new way of working and in this book if you read it it's it's quite I hate it, but it, it's quite incredible. He's saying things like old companies uh, should reinvent themselves. The managers are from uh, uh, are working like dinosaurs, and the people they want autonomy, responsibility. And here, all of a sudden, you have um, you have a new way of working that is built not just on space or on tools, but on people and management and uh, culture, organizational culture and saying we have to change the culture in organization towards more autonomy, giving the power to the people, to the employees, and we can use the space and the technology to do that. And when we have, when we have understood that, we have the, the three pillars of new ways of working, and we have a press article in 2011 as well from Ruud Bahn, again, uh, a Netherlands, uh, Dutch, sorry, uh, author, uh, that is breaks bites and behaviors. It is a title, and that summarizes very well these three eras. First, you are the breaks, second, the bites, and third, the behaviors. And when you put everything together, you have a new ways of working project. That's what kind of the, the message of the paper. So that this is a project in which we have a, a, a spatial, a technological, and a, a human managerial dimension. And then multiple firms in the Netherlands and then in Belgium commit to many more projects. And I will give you some other examples of firms that and, and institutions that did that later. Uh, but some of the earliest to do that were a bank, Rabobank, Jetronix is an IT firm, and Aliander, I think it's a firm from the energy sector, if I remember well. And then after that, now um, it, it really begins difficult to, to track what new ways of working mean because people are using it in the plural form. So they are, they are talking about new ways of working and they include everything. They include co-working, they include things like uh, uh, democracy at work. And maybe some of you heard about the Entreprise Libérée, that is the, the, the firm without any management. So there is the, the people basically are, are all together uh, leading the firm, uh, the sports firm Decathlon in, in here is, is a good example of that. They did this, the people in the, everyone can, for example, um, decide of their own salary and things like that. It's an interesting experience. And, and so you have this kind of, of things that come into the NWO label. So it becomes very wide. Uh, you also have the, this idea of instead of having employees, we are using more and more freelancers, flexible workers, and things like that. So new ways of working has really grown up into a very big label. 
And so this is kind of the final message. It has become very complex, but still it is marked by these eras of the space, the technology and the, the, the behaviors. So with that picture, I hope you have a better view or the understanding of what, how it, where it does come from. And you see that it's nothing, it's not new. And, and in the Netherlands, notably, um, uh, firms have been doing this for a long time. Uh, another ways of trying to, to introduce new ways of working, this is how I used to do it in, in conferences um, uh, before, is to say, okay, there is the world of work which is changing uh, and we can find, uh, here are some examples of why it is changing, but you can find a hundred of, of arguments to say the world of work is changing, right? It's not difficult to, 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 to emphasize this kind of discourses, the globalization, the outsourcing, the increasing competition, the new technology, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what is interesting is how in companies we translate this, uh, this observation into a new ideal of what what it should be to work in the company in 2021 or in 2025 and 2013, etc. Et and there, there are differences between firms because some firms will say, okay, this is all about flexibility and autonomy. Others will say it's about transparency. It's about collaborations. It's about employment. So there is room for maneuver there in redefining um, the work ideal. And then we have, if we want to do the exercise so that it's more concrete for you, in new ways of working, you can have different pillars. You have everything that relates to the space, as I told you. So, uh, well, uh, at first there, it, there were there were a lot of questions about open spaces. So open spaces, I guess you have uh, an ID. If you don't have, an, I didn't include pictures because there are a lot of differences between uh, the cases. But if you if you Google open space, you will quickly realize what it is. That is the the the, the fact that the space is, is open and there are no more walls. Uh, in the space, and this was uh, really criticized a lot by virtually everyone. So uh, I think that now in 2021, uh, the space designers and the architects, they, 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 they are well aware that the big open spaces do not really work anymore. So if you look for the for more recent new ways of working project, you will see that it's no one is doing big open spaces anymore and you have more uh, clever ways of organizing space it's still open but it's kind of semi-open half open um you don't have individual offices but you have like small work zones of 12 people and then there you there's there's there are some separations and then another work zones and things like that of course as i told you you have a shared workspace hot desking flex desk you call that whatever you want but the basic principle is that nobody has his own desk anymore and you can move around in the space when i say nobody there are differences between companies in some of them the top managers have their own uh, their own place um in others not uh, it depends on the on the firms and you see that there are room for adjustment in this and then there is activity based work which is a big word to just say, uh, instead of having uh, individual offices that are all the same, uh, it makes more sense you know, uh, to, to, to have different work zones, like one, one zone for collaborating, one zone for concentration, different kinds of meeting rooms. So it's kind of a diversification of the, the type of, of, of zones of, of, of the workspace. You have the technological innovation, so you have collaborative tools. One thing we didn't talk about, but very often in these projects, you try to remove as much paper as possible, because if you have a lot of paper in what you are doing, it's very difficult to move around with your paper, to, to go to, to work remotely. Oh, the, the day after that, I'm going to go to the office. I need my paper. I don't have to forget them. Paper is a big issue in, this, in these processes, so the firms try to get rid of the paper as much as they can. So you have all this technological innovation, uh, working for, at a distance, whether you, you, you know what it is now, uh, maybe you have a, a phone, a USB phone and things like that. You have all the cultural and managerial part, which is the most difficult, honestly, to, 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 to design because people do not agree on this and between the management, well, the trade unions, the employees, the middle management, People, when you say, okay, we will promote autonomy in the workplace, okay, but what does it mean? Okay, it's very difficult. And sometimes it goes very far in, in terms of participation and democracy at work. You have the, the organization of time, which is changing, and very often there is this reasoning. If we go towards more autonomy, and if people can work remotely, well, working from nine to five doesn't really make sense anymore. So let's just leave it to the people, and employees can work 
when they want, how they want, and, and, and really decide what is best for them. But, and, and how will we control the work? We will control it by an objective-based management policy. That is, the manager will look uh, once a week, for example, or once a month. Uh, okay, are the, ob are the objectives reached? Is the work completed? Things like that. Uh, and so there is really this, uh, the, the, the time doesn't really matter when you are working, it doesn't really matter. Of course, you have more interventionist uh, policies such as disconnection policies and preventing employees to access uh, the, their email, for example, in the night. Uh, but sometimes employees don't like that neither because they want, if they are autonomous, some of them want to be able to look at their email uh, at the time uh, whatever time it's kind of contrary to the autonomy principle uh, but again depending on the firms you can find such contradiction it's not really a, a problem in itself uh, and then you have the work organization with the remote working sometimes also the project and agile working uh, for example if you take ing the bank they also committed to a, a big reorganization pro process by that i mean that the people had to reapply in the organization so they changed their structure they they changed the department their organization and the people had to reapply for for position um and and several companies are doing this uh reorganizing their departments and how they are structured and and committing into this very difficult to manage processes in which people have to find new positions in the in the organization uh, simply put so that's kind of the package of new ways of working and of course it doesn't mean that you have to do everything and some firms will emphasize more the spatial side others will more will play around the remote working um, the cultural transformation is very different depending on the case some firms will emphasize that others do not want to open this this box uh, so that's kind of the everything you can find in a, a, a work project but you don't have to find absolutely everything and there can be differences of course depending on the organizations so i hope this is clear so far and that you have a clearer view of what new ways of working means it's not just a new building it's not just an open space it's also everything that goes with it the technological innovation the, the what we try to do um, to, uh, as, as to, what to, we try to change in the managerial relationships uh, in the culture, uh, the organization of time and of, of work. And so the question that I, I would like to explore with you now is, okay, th this is a, this could be look like a nice idea or not, this could be maybe, but some people have to think that it's attractive, otherwise companies would not do that. But how do we translate this idea into a concrete project? And this is the question that I would like to explore with you uh, by sharing the results of the study that I've done in an insurance company. Uh, and I've been there for a bit, a bit less than three years uh, and I've been in the workplace. I followed the work of the project teams. And so I'm, I'm kind of summarizing that today for you. But what I wanted to say is that it's just, it's, it's not just, you could, you could see that and think, okay, it's just something for the private sector, right? And the private firms, okay, maybe they have an interest in doing that, but as a public organization, we are not interested. Well, I can, I think I can think of uh, more public cases, public uh, organization cases doing this kind of project than private firms. Um, the SPF, the, the, the uh, Federal Public Service of Mobility and Social Security in Belgium did this like 10 years ago already. So they were among the first in Belgium to, to do such a project. Um, the RTBF, you know, the, the public media company in Belgium is rebuilding its main building in Brussels and, and they will do something like that. That, that is, they will have uh, less places than people, uh, remote or remote working policies and transformation of the structure and so on. In universities, this is happening as well. And, uh, and here in, in Liège, for example, some faculties are already moving to work. The, 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 the policy is all the new buildings that are being designed and all the new workspaces, everything will be organized according to these principles of shared workspaces and so on. Uh, I had one colleague working on the Brussels transport company, the STIP, uh, and for the administrative part, they did this as well. Um, of course, not in the, not in the vehicles, but for the, the administrative uh, staff. Uh, and that's also kind of an old project. 
in some municipalities, the, the, the building, the Régie de Bâtiment, uh, I've also worked with the students doing a master thesis there, and it's the same story, uh, Proximus as well. So, so you see that it's not just, it's, it's happening both in the private and the public sector. And here, the example that I, I, I have studied the most is an insurance company, but it's not just for the private sector. So, what I want to see to, 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 to tell you is kind of the story of how it went at this insurance company. So the insurance company started in 2014. So of course we are in a context in which there is no COVID because it happened before the COVID. But what we can expect is because of the COVID, people have been used to work from home and companies uh, can more uh, really see the interest of capitalizing on this experience to rethink their workspaces and their uh, building uh, contracts. Because of course, building contracts are expensive. And this is kind of the starting point in a lot of firms. Uh, and coming back to the case of the insurance company, so I name it big Belgian insurance company, not very original, but there it is. And so to, to come back on this case, in 2014, the firms, the, the firm is, is uh, the, the, the building contracts, the leasing contract for the building of the firm is coming at an end, to an end, sorry. And so the, 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 the executive committee says, okay, in two years, we have no more building. What do we do? We have to find another one. The building had to be uh, renovated or something. So we have to move. Uh, okay, we have to find a solution. So there is, I call that, a, this is a bit scientific term. We have to make it look like it's scientific, but it's kind of a precipitating jolt. That is something that happens. That is, uh, and no one really wanted this or asked for this. It just happens. Uh, the building contract is coming to an end. What do we do? So it opens the door for possibilities. And what's happening, there is uh, in the insurance company, uh, the HR director and uh, will will work with two or three colleagues from the HR department mainly and will say, well, maybe there is an opportunity there not to just relocate, but also to rethink, to take the time to rethink the organization and how we are working. And do we want to do adjustment? Do we want to work, do we want to work differently to rethink the culture? And so on. And so there is, it's not just something happening. There is at some point in the company, in the organization, a problematization. So someone is trying to, uh, to build a problem that is more complex than just we have to relocate. No, we have also other problems that we could address at the same time. And I will, uh, I have an overview of what it looks like the problematization. This is a figure, a synthesis, of course, of, of what was in the discussion at this time uh, in this HR team I was talking about. So the HR team says, okay, we have mobility issues in Brussels because this is, uh, this you know it better than I do probably, this is a very difficult city to, to, to commute in. Um, we have problem with the building market because buildings are really expensive. We could save money on buildings. We have also problem with our workforce because at that time, the average age of the workers was above 52 or something like this. So the company was already thinking in 10 years, half of our workforce will be gone. And so we have to attract new people, but the new new people are not coming to our company there. And when we visit the building, it's very old. It's It does not give you, um, it does not make you want to work for, for the company. Uh, so to polish the, the image as well, uh, and some of the things, the customer, the technology, and, and change the culture that was also uh, very, uh, very often mentioned. So, you, and you see that the sentence uh, in, in the lowest part of the screen, this is what the HR strategic advisor told. And, and I think the message is, is, really, is really interesting. We could have said in five years, we will relocate, move to another building. But this is not what happened. What we say is this will be a year of cultural change first and incidentally we will move out. So you see how the, the, the how there is work being done to uh, change the priorities and to shift the priorities and to make it a first a project of trans company transformation. And then, yes, there is um, there is a, a relocation uh, happening, uh, but it's not the most important change. You can already see like the the the, the evolution. 
okay, fine. So this HR group with the HR director is working on that. But then it comes the, 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 the problem, okay, we, we have to find a solution and new ways of working appears to be kind of a solution. Hey, look, because reminder what I could what I told you before, look at new ways of working. This this is interesting because it's at the same time it solves our relocation problems, but it also helps us to 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 answer the cultural uh, technological change that we want to do. So that could be a nice way to do it. So the, the HR uh, little group starts to build a business plan, okay, explaining this is what we will do and this is why it should not just be a relocation, but there should be uh, more in it. And then comes the crucial part, which is that, okay, the HR can work in its, uh, in its little offices as much as they want, but they need the approval of the executive committee. And this is a crucial stage. The executive committee needs to endorse the project, just otherwise there is no budget, there is no uh, formal approval. So it needs to, to have this step of, yeah, it's called interestment. They need to, in, to, 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 to generate the interest, if you want, of the executive committee. And they, do, they did this in two ways, by trying to persuade them, but also by trying to inspire them by taking their CEO and bringing it into other firms that had done such new ways of working projects and including in the Netherlands and putting their CEOs and say, hey, discuss with the CEO of, of, of Rubberbank, of, of Interpolis and, and so on and, and see how it, how it went and you will see that it works. So the interestment process, the quote here is a bit long, but I, I found it, I, I, I left it there because I find it very interesting. The, the HR strategic, uh, the strategic advisor, which was part of this group and which tried to push the project told me this. She told me when we went in front of the executive committee, we, were, we had three lines of argument. First, this would be a project in which we save money. And that was the easy part because when you reduce the building space and so on, you save money. So that was the, the easiest part to demonstrate. And people were, okay, they're, they're, here was the calculation and ah, okay. But the second part is that if we do that, people will be more motivated or employees will be more, more motivated to work in a new working environment, more flexible, more dynamic and so on. And third, because of this, their productivity will also increase. Um, and so it's on these two last points that uh, the discussion really, um, and, and as you can see from the quote, it was not something that was easy for everyone uh, to understand. It was at odds with the company's culture and it was a big company insurance, so very hierarchical with a lot of, of managerial pregnancy. And so the CEO was not immediately convinced. He had a billion questions and after six months, Finally, he said, okay, we, 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 dis we have discussed this enough. We have enough information. And the real question is, do we believe in it or not? And so he used the words, this is an act of faith. So you can see how, when you are facing such a project, it's not, you cannot just hope to have a, a rational answer. Okay, we should do it or not. People will disagree on this. Some will find it really enthusiastic, like a nice project. And other will say, oh, that, that's not what I want for my company. So, and, and the committee in this case, of course, uh, well, took the decision to go on. And so to say, okay, let's go, let's, let's go into that direction and, uh, and, and let's do it. Uh, yeah, you have the reference. So I, I've been speaking about the case and of course there, there is a paper about it if you want to reread it. Um, so I, I'm giving you the, the reference of the quote here. So once we are there, we have the validation from the executive committee and then Okay, that's nice. And but what do we do? We need to find a way to 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 put it uh, to concretely um, turn it into a project and 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 make progress and and design a new space and so on. And there, there is this kind of of bricks bytes behaviors thing, which is helping the the people in the insurance company to 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 align. Um, and I have a quote for this. So the bricks by the behaviors, uh, this is a small reminder, but I think you have understood what it is. The bricks, this is the space, okay? Uh, the bytes is the technologies and the behaviors is more the change management, the cultural transformation. So we want to have a project that has these three dimensions, okay? But as you can see from the code below, what the HR strategic advisor is saying is that, well, at some point, Okay, we have the validation of the executive committee to do a new ways of working project, but what does it mean and how do we do that? And we have to work together with 
people from the BRICS, so that is architects, space designers, people that are used to think in terms of the space, the, 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 the ventilation, the, the, the lighting, the sound and, and things like that. People from the bytes, IT specialists, and people from behaviors, HRs, communication specialists, and things like that. So we have to, 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 to work together with these people and, and to find agreement. Uh, and, and we cannot do this by just speaking of a new ways of working project. It doesn't mean it's anything. So using the three Bs, well, she, what she said is this is a proven approach which works very well and we saw that in the Netherlands. So you can see how the, the influence of the previous of other companies on how the project was was conducted. I think it's it's quite it's quite amazing. But her idea was to use this, the three Bs, to uh, to structure the project and to give meaning. And so all the people involved in the project could understand, okay, I see what, what we are doing there. We are doing bricks, bytes and behaviors. Okay. And then there was the enrollment. So concretely, they, they, they were teams that were structured around, around this ID. Okay. So you had, uh, well, this is a, a small, a small illustration. So the executive committee, and then in green, you have the project team. Okay. That was called project 2017, because that was the year in which they were supposed to relocate. Okay. And then you have the, the, the three teams, behaviors, bytes, and breaks. Uh, and then you have a lot of that was really a big project. There were more than 150, I think, people involved in the project teams. So that, that's huge. And you had, I, I won't enter into detail, but you had implementers um, charge of the concrete implementation of the new spaces. You had a specific team, paperless, uh, which went into every department trying to work with them on how can you work without paper. Uh, and do you need really uh, some paper for some of your activities? It's not easy in an insurance firm because in insurance uh, you have a lot of paper usually still, you have a lot of legal documents and things like that. Uh, and then you had coaches working with middle managers, change agents, and even ambassadors chosen between, uh, among the employees to, uh, to work with the, with the project team and to spread the good word, if you want, of, of the project. Uh, and then comes the yeah these are the, maybe I could have simply did here comes the relocation and so it's where it becomes concrete people are there uh, in 2017 people actually move to the new building and there they, they can live in the new building and experiment it and and, and so the, there is the first day of course of the relocation is always a bit special and then you have uh, it, it evolves quite quickly and people get quite of use to the new new environment and what is really interesting is the end of the process which is the mobilization so some people and it's, it's very clever uh, i think in the form of how they did it they interviewed people that were very convinced and motivated by the project and they put that at the forefront saying hey look our project is a big success of course it's it's always a bit more difficult than that, but they really use this. I remember also, I find it interesting, the, the HR director told me, well, one of our biggest uh, proponent and defender are our trade unions, because our trade unions were very skeptical. And once they move there, some of them realize, well, that's nice. And so they began, and so the, 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 the firm began to, began to use the trade unions to spread the good word also, uh, and, and the trade unions met other trade unions from other firms saying, hey, it works and so on and so on. I'm not saying that the trade unions were all uh, favorable towards the project, but at, at the end, some of them at least um, were, were uh, enthusiastic and, and optimistic and positive. Uh, and what is interesting is that it's kind of a cycle. So once, once this company has finished uh, her project, well, other companies come and visit uh, the, the, the space and discuss with the HR director, with the CEO, and so it spreads, it kind of disseminates. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fashion, it's a trend, and and uh, and, and now this, this company is quite well known for uh, her new building and, and they, they organize visits regularly and so on. And so this is the process, and you see from how basic problem we have to relocate, we have all this project taking shape and, uh, and being uh, finished. And the last thing that I wanted to do with you is to um, kind of see, okay, fine, they have their new buildings, they have this new organization with a remote working policy, um, and, and how, what, does it work? Or what, how do people react to that? 
So just a precision, my, my work was more on the process, so on what I explained to you, and on this specific aspect, I also rely on the works done by other researchers who are more interested in the after part, so what happens once it's done, uh, what do people say, and globally, if you read the scientific literature, you will find that once it's over, the surveys are generally rather positive, and people over overall are satisfied. I remember in the insurance company, they did a survey three months after the relocation, and 70% of the people says that they were rather satisfied or very satisfied. So the, the, their numbers weren't that bad. Of course, that means that 30% of the people are not satisfied. So it doesn't mean that it's all uh, green and, and easy. But overall, um, the, when we take the, the, the critical mass of employees, it, it's still going okay. Um, and, and what is interesting about that is that um, when the process is going on, we hear a lot of dissatisfaction. And, and the, the project teams have the impression that all employees and middle managers as well were against the project. And in the end, they, they realized that through the service that they, they've done, uh, it wasn't that bad. At the same time, there are uh, several dissatisfaction factors uh, that, are, that are underlined in the literature. And so new ways of, I'm not saying that new ways of working is a miracle solution, that everything is green and uh, pink, or I don't know what color, but everything is nice. Um, but the first thing that is underlined, and it's more honestly, that this one, so this is maybe one of the first thing that you can read is that in these kind of environments, it's very open, so it's very noisy, and people find it difficult to focus. Um, so this is a, re a very historical um, remark, because, of course, 20 years ago, in big open spaces, of course, that was very noisy, but now I have visited some open space, semi-open spaces, in which, honestly, you can have a lot of people and it's not that noisy, of course, you can always be distracted because because people come talk to you, or or see, you you can do not have visible uh, signs like my door is closed, so you don't go into the office. There, it's an it's still open, so you can be easily distracted. But it's not that noisy anymore because space designers have found new ways of you know new techniques. Uh, I don't know how to say that, but new new materials so that. The space is less noisy. The Moussa son horizon. It's a bit too technical for 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 my English, but so things like that that makes it less noisy at least. But still, people can still report to difficulty to focus. This is a very individual question. Some people find it difficult, others do not. Uh, another very personal uh, issue is the lack of customization and personalization of the workspace. So. For some people, it's not a problem to come with a laptop, to put the laptop and to work all day long. For others, but, well, you need your space, you need your uh, little plant, little picture, and, and, and this is, this is yeah, something that is almost always shown in the studies of new ways of working. And, and, and some people get used to it, and others do find it always kind of difficult, so Again, uh, this is this is uh, another maybe dissatisfaction factor. The problem is uncivil behaviors. So because you share the workspace, uh, you can arrive at the morning at the office. You want to take a desk, and the desk is not clean because the the, the guy that was there before you uh, hasn't cleaned it. Uh, it's still if you if you think of the COVID, it's still more and more uh, maybe uh, relevant the fact of uh, disinfecting your desk before leaving it and things like that. So. You are people not respecting the rules, like you are in a zone for focusing and concentration, and someone is picking up the phone uh, in front of you, and so you can, what's happening? And what's interesting is that no one is there to manage the space. So it's not a manager that will be, hey, <laughs> turn, turn off your phone. It's up to everyone, and so to the, to the, to the employees as well, to, let's say you are an employee in a, in a, in a, in a concentration zone, and the CEO is there and he's picking up the phone. Well, theoretically, you could say to the to your CEO, "Well, this is a quiet zone. Could you please go somewhere else?" And of course, it's not. It doesn't happen like that, so it creates problems um, and 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 tensions in in some firms where people do not behave uh, uh, according to the rules. A big, I would say, what I think is is very significant is that 
if you have your individual office closed and so on, while you have walls, you are not visible from all your colleagues, you are not audible from all your colleagues. In these environments, even if you have meeting rooms, usually the, the, the philosophy is to have the, the glass walls to so that it's 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 true it's a luminous uh, bright environment the light is is going through and okay fine but you have kind of this uh, some people uh, feel like they are always being watched or, or even anybody can see your screen if they go if they pass behind you things like that and everybody can hear you if you talk to your colleague and your manager is there well he can hear what you say so you have also this kind of, of problem that are very difficult to to to, pin, to pinpoint but but it's 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 there and and it should not be neglected of course you have a lot of managerial challenges so challenges related to the relations between the employees and his supervisor being managed at a distance we know it's it's not easy um, and, uh, and and even for a manager, managing a team of like 10 person, you have two there, two at the other floor, two are not there, you don't know where they are, four are working remotely. So you have also this kind of, of, uh, of challenges related to the managerial relation. How do you control the employees and the work that they do? Or how do you trust them? Because it's a, uh, also a popular world of new ways of working, trust. So all these questions, Related to the the, the 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 managerial relationship control, of course, we heard we hear a lot of stories about people. What, what I heard personally, for example, was an employee beginning to work remotely and saying, "Well, I cannot go to when I go to the toilet, I take my phone because I do not want that uh, my manager to phone me, and and, that I, and if I do not answer, he'll think that I'm not working." So all these kind of things, I will not. Uh, emphasize them because you know that because of the teleworking situation right now, but people are controlling themselves while they are working from home and putting pressure on themselves. And in certain cases, it's again a very individual question, it can be a very problematic. Peer control as well, because in teams, for example, where you have you, you need to be at the phone, if you do not answer the phone, well, your colleagues will uh, get the call, okay, once, twice, and then the colleague will think, well, where, where are you? Where, where is my colleague? Why is he not picking the phone? And so you have this kind of insidious peer control mechanisms. You see someone going to the, the coffee machine and you think, okay, that's, a, that's twice in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a three times in a one hour, for example, is he really working? You see the kind of behaviors that you can observe that are not really uh, uh, well desirable. Uh, yeah, just something on the middle managers. We didn't talk a lot about them. So when I say middle managers, is the the team leaders, like the the the, 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 in the yeah the team leaders, the the proximity managers, because these managers usually research recognizes that they they have the, the the hardest role because simultaneously the project teams will say okay we need these middle managers to to buy into the project. Uh, otherwise, it will not work. We need them to play the game of okay, uh, managing at a distance, letting leave, fixing objectives, and leaving people work uh, at their own pace, and so on. But at the same time, uh, they have to trust. They have to fix objectives. They have to manage at a distance. They have to empower people. To they need to reinvent themselves. So the ma the middle managers are almost systematically kind of lost in this kind of transformation. So it's difficult because the employees need to count on these middle managers, but these middle managers themselves do not really know what to do. Um, and, and, and for some of them, it's, it's very, okay, I see what I want to do. I have no problem of, of, of going into that direction, but from others, it's really challenging. And in some cases, in the insurance company, there were individual coaching for these managers. There were team meetings organized with people from the project teams. So there was, it was well framed that there was accompaniment, a lot of accompaniment and investment to, into helping these middle managers. But I think this is the only case I saw in which there was this level of emphasis and, and, and concern for the middle management. So it's it's also it should not, really it should not be forgotten because, of course, it's difficult for the employees, but for the middle managers as well, and for the relation between the two, it's finding new ways to to work in this environment. One thing that is absolutely essential to remember, because 
the I would say like the, the fear level of the employees is like at this level before during the process and when they see the the, the environment it goes down and, and they, they realize okay it's not that terrible why because when you speak about the space so when you try to this you have to find your place every day so it looks very daunting uh, and so the conceived space that is how we describe new ways of working it can it can be really uh, it's a, well it, it can be a bit frightening i would say but actually the way people lived in these workspaces is very different and concretely okay yes the first week i need to move a little to please the project teams and then People go to the same place, people recreate new habits, new territories, and, and, and really the, the, the way the space is lived is very different from how it is presented in, uh, in theory, I would say. Um, and I've, I, we have seen th incredible things. I remember teams, uh, it's not in, in this company, but a, a team of like 10 people, they had their workspace, I would say, and each day they were switching by one desk. So they were kind of turning like this to, you, you, you see the ID, to, to, to turn the ID of the, the mobility at work into some kind of ridiculous view and to show that it, it did not make sense. So it's kind of, uh, I, I like this example to, to, of these people that they were just switching by one. It, it really, it was kind of funny at the same time. But yeah, in the lift space, people retake habits and, 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 and find ways to, to deal with the space, actually. Yes, and the last point is, of course, because I, I, as I understood from uh, uh, my, my discussion with, uh, with uh, Cristiano and Dika, of course, you are early in the change process. And the change process is where the challenges are, because people are expecting things from the future. They don't know where they are going. Uh, the managers don't know where they are going. The project teams don't know where they are going. No one knows where this is going, uh, and so this is a bit, uh, this is a bit daunting. Um, and, and I think there is a lot of of room and opportunities, as as you can see, um, in the change process to try to to design the project differently and to say, okay, there we we should be careful of the employees of the middle managers. Uh, and here, there are some examples in the presentation. We, we, we could have ambassadors among the employees. I'm not saying that this is a good example, but globally speaking, the insurance company I'm talking about, I think did a, a nice, well, did a nice job. We had other cases in which it was much more a problem of well, people say, if this is, if this is going, uh, if this is, if the project is going to the term, I'm not coming to the office anymore, or or I'm leaving the company, or things like that. And in the insurance company, these there were spaces to discuss, to hear about these resistances, and to 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 find adjustments also. Um, so the, the the change process is really open, and and there are a lot of room. There is a lot of room for everyone, employees, trade unions, middle management, managers, HR, to, to try to, to give a different direction to the project. So I think that's, uh, that's where the, the hope lies. Uh, and I see that I won't be uh, further, so that I won't be longer, sorry, so that I can take your questions, of course, and just remind you the reference. I can send it, I can send the PDF document if you, if you want. And this is the written version of the story that I told you today about the legitimation process in the insurance company. And if this is uh, of interest to you, uh, just read it and have a look. Uh, that's it for me. I will just stop the presentation right now and I would be happy to answer your questions. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, I think that we have just discover what we are always repeating again and again, that the commission is not inventing something. It's just late on doing something that has been already done before and not taking lessons of what has been done before. I think that all the colleagues here were able to put names on the, on your PDF, who is in charge of breaks, who is in charge of bytes. And I think that what is really missing is the change of culture, is the behaviors. Uh, and all, even that uh, uh, everything is just uh, dealt in in different and uh, problematic approach because those who are dealing with uh, bricks are not discussing with those who are in charge of behaviors. Uh, 
there is not a such a project. We are changing bricks. It's already decided. Everything is done. Uh, no one has decided and discussed changing behaviors. Uh, this change of culture is supposed to be done uh, through some announcement made by the commissioner. And we have found across your presentation all the words mentioned by our commissioner trust, uh, culture of results, no longer control. Uh, everything that we are hearing every day is on your presentation. Um, and actually, my, my question is uh, how come we could get the results? I mean, we have a commissioner, we have a commission, we have someone somewhere uh, who is preaching the change of culture. But we know that the resistances in the inside the institution are enormous because you cannot change the culture after 40 years. And the commission is something like a caserma. Uh, hierarchy, uh, uh, fears, uh, everyone is afraid of the uh, possibility to not to be promoted or to be dismissed if you are a manager. Uh, the best example is this uh, famous um, letter of 13 director generals just asking to apply what the commission has decided to. And now everyone is uh, raising question, who has signed the letter? Can I have a copy of the letter? Uh, and apparently the commission is furious about the letter and others are saying, perhaps I regret to have signed the letter and the staff of the other SDGs are asking the director general, did you sign the letter? And, and actually it is totally the contrary of the open dialogue and discussion that must be organized. And on your experience, uh, how did they manage to change the culture? <laughs> Well, this is this is a great question, and as as I explained in the presentation, that was maybe the hardest point, and I think the strength in this case was to have a committed HR team that was convinced. That's it. They were convinced from the beginning that it had to go that way, and of course, at the beginning, top managers were against. The executive committee was not convinced, and so it took a lot of time for them to work their way and to find ways to to inspire and, and, and one could say to convert the people to, to this kind of, uh, of, of to, to this set of beliefs and cultural changes. And there were a lot of discussion, of course, and negotiations. And I think it brings me to another point. I've studied this a lot also, and I've not discussed it in the presentation. It's the importance of participation in the process, because if the, the, if the starting point of new ways of working is if people say, well, we will implement a project that promotes autonomy, responsibility from the people and, and engagement and so on. When you think about the change process, logically, you think, well, it would make sense then to involve them in the change process ahead of the, of the transformation to ask them their, their opinion. And what did they, what do they think about the project? And, uh, and it's kind of interesting because it's working both ways. It's at the same times. Uh, helping the top managers to maybe realize that some difficulties of the or some fears uh, or, or suggestions also to take them into account from the, the employees and the middle managers. And at the same time, sometimes it is transforming the project towards new directions and, uh, and the top management is not always open to that. So uh, I have other cases that I've studied in which the main the, the, it was not a question of buildings or technologies, it was a question of governance and how the, the, the executive committee could learn to, uh, to work in a more participative manner of delegating tasks and responsibilities to project teams and then to managers and, and with an implication of employees. So I think it's, it's a very, it's, it's a big part of the, of the project. And I remember in the insurance company, the people were telling me, well, we have the bricks, we have done that before, we know how to, to, to reorganize a building, we have the bytes, we have done that before, we know how to implement new technologies, but the behavior <laughs> is very difficult. And, and I think this is why this case is interesting. Again, I'm not saying it's a perfect case or, or anything, but there was, there was, there was awareness about that. And, and the, very early in the process, the, the, the HR department supported by the executive committees realized, okay, we, we need to work with managers, middle managers, I mean, uh, with employees and to, to have a specific, well, to have coaches, to have a platform where people can ask their questions and receive answers from the project teams. This kind of, of, of things that facilitated the process 
um, and, and so that, that, that helped to, to go to move towards this, this, uh, this cultural evolution. I'm not saying that it's, that it worked perfectly. And I'm sure that we, I could go now in this company and find people that would not agree yet with, with this and say, oh, it's bullshit, autonomy, responsibility. We still have to work to, to do the same work than before. It doesn't change. So I, I think it's very, it's a very open and difficult question and that uh, no one has really found the answer. And, and, and yeah, the, the, the main issue is to, to convince uh, the most possible amount of people, I would say, uh, to, to, to move on with the project, because if no one is convicted, it's convinced the project will go nowhere. <laughs> <As simple. laughs> okay. Thank you. I, have a, I, I see a, a very interesting question. There is a colleague, uh, I cannot catch his or her name, uh, someone who has an experience on 98 and, uh, and would like to share with us. I don't oh, know. Could you? I, I was. I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat, and I cannot do the same. The, 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 no, 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 no. But just it is, the question. No, no. There is not really a question to you. Is someone who he wants to share with us his or her experience in this new way of working? Oh, that okay. He okay. Had, or she had a 98, uh, but he can ask the floor. But I don't see. Yeah, we can unmute you. Dika is a, a colleague called Malgorzata. Yes, Malgorzata, that's me. Um, yeah, okay. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Hello. I, I could start the video if you want to see me, if if you prefer. Uh, yeah, hello. I'm working for Digit, so I will be soon moving to the to the famous V the V1. V1. Uh, and I used to work for several IT companies, which as long as far as long ago as 1998, specifically uh, when I started in Accenture. And uh, uh, there were good implementations of, at that time, hot desking uh, and bad implementations. And I would like to share a little bit, if you allow me a, a, a couple of minutes. Uh, the difference is one and one only. Either you are a company that works somewhere else, which consulting companies, some of them do, or maybe uh, insurance companies, or you don't. Uh, in one, in in the in, in the good case, and it was also good for the employers. We it was Accenture, and we were working at the customers' offices, where we had our desks, laptops, and so on. But there, where we had our place to work, our project, basically. Uh, the other companies were also service companies, IT companies, but they were working in the office. The proper solution when the uh, when the when the order to to do the hot desking came from from you know from the states from from Silicon Valley was to ignore it and lie about it, because there was no point in hot desking when you come to the office every day and work from there. That's just a nonsense. And that's it. And I would like what I think is important is that we do not get deceived that hot desking and teleworking can be think of as uh, separate as and contradictory. They are not. The only way that makes hot desking profitable and the primary motivation is money, is budget here. The only way that makes it possible to bring profit is to push people out of the office, which means in some cases getting rid of the consultants, let them work somewhere else, or push people to work from home. And I'm not saying this is bad in principle, it can be good uh, and it can be very useful and it should be allowed. The problem it be becomes imminent when it becomes, in fact, forced. And there is actually hardly any justification to this, apart from the budget. Uh, so it is kind of bundled. So people will prefer to work from home sometimes, but sometimes they will not. But they can still be pushed out of office if the conditions of working are kind of 
hostile. So I'm afraid that those 13 uh, general directions that signed the letters will be pacified very quickly because pushing us out of the office brings enormous amount of money. And it also uh, and we it also puts the costs of the workspace to the people because we will be paying pay, paying for the internet connection. I mean, this is not just the screen and the chair. The chair needs a desk. I mean, if you tried the proper chair in your at your dining table, you noticed that it has a different structure than the desk in the office. So you cannot really have the right posture. I mean, some of you may, some of you may have big houses. Some of us do not have them, but we still have to work from there. This is absolutely perfect. And this is a privilege uh, in the pandemic situation, but this is also a perfect example of the shock doctrine. We will be pushed to work from home because this brings money and this brings savings. And and this will become a problem. Not that the, not if somebody allows to telework. The, whoever does not want to allow for teleworking, they will be convinced very, very, very swiftly uh, by the Excel tables uh, with the with the figures in them. So they will allow it. The problem will be when you want to work from the work place. We have already been asked questions. Why would you want to come to the office? I would want to come to the office to work. This is also solved. I mean, before pandemic, it was also solved in a way that, okay, if you have hot desking, you can sit with your project and you can have uh, this project spaces. It's easier to sit together. No, the actual fact is that when you hot desking, you don't know every day where you, the people from the project are working. Just today at the talk with Mario, I heard uh, from our general director, I heard that at the moment we don't yet, we cannot yet book spaces for projects. Which means that, you know, the effort will not go, may not go there if we are really not careful and if we do not specify the points of difficulties and where it is not right. Because in your presentation, I'm actually, I would like to thank you very much. This was extremely interesting presentation. I wasn't aware that the, that the research got so detailed. And of course, the objections that you listed, I, I, I mean, I know them all because I experienced them all, apart from the cost, because this is probably a kind of new thing that we are all, in fact, bearing the cost of the workspace. But I want to say one thing uh, that I noticed uh, in the town already. Uh, the companies that rent spaces for co-working, they already sell, start selling dedicated desks, which is obvious because no matter what, I mean, we can work in different ways, but while we have things to do, we don't need, as I was once told you know during some previous discussions oh a place to read and a place to write and a place to discuss you know the desk is the place to read write and discuss basically i mean you may need a meeting room so the people need relatively steady places and home working will play again into this need because what you get used to the office you kind of make your space you will more you will more agree to this but this is obvious that people need some sort of stability in the workplace and there's actually no need that if people don't want to to to, to, to telework that there is no objection that they could have a desk but Hot desking is also a way of pushing you out of office. And I find it extremely not fair because I like my dining table. I wanted not to have this screen to which I'm looking now, and I want uh, not to have to sit in a proper desk chair at my dining table because it takes up space for my dining chairs, as simply as that. So I'm at the same time very much appreciate that letter that was signed and very worried that the push will really be there because it also allow to make allows to make us work more we have noticed since uh, during this year that we are working more we are working longer hours uh, the right for, to disconnect it has even to be debated i mean we 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 weren't we were never told that we will work around the clock and that we will provide the office space 
to our institutions. This should not be the case. And I think these are the points which should be very carefully negotiated because this is the real problem. Homeworking is very fine as long as this is not an obligation. I, I can Thank only you. say, Margareta, that I want you to be with us when the negotiation will start. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> you have been <laughs> you have been uh, wonderful in explaining what is going on. <laughs> Thank no, you. But very seriously, much for if, your if I could yeah, be of sure. any help, uh, you know, I'd be very glad to. I don't know. I'm I'm really serious. I mean, it's uh, crucial to have a call that have already experienced when the negotiation we finally start because here we are implementing things that you have never started negotiating I mean, there is another lack of social dialogue there is another facet of this situation i don't know jeremy if you have uh, any comments on Margarita experience yes yeah I, uh, yeah that was a, i think there, there was a very interesting idea there that, and that's the difference between what you said and my presentation i think is that before the covid you you wouldn't find a company in Belgium, I think, a large company where people would say we can realistically work five five days a week. It was the, the discourse was like, yes, you can telework, but two days a week, not more. And I the only firm I, I, I found that, that that could allow that was Microsoft when I went there in 2017. They had their building and I met a manager there explaining to me the project. And he explained to me that he was planning to renovate the building so the people would go out. And so I asked the question, oh, where are they going to work? Uh, it was for a period of three months and he told me, I don't think we will find another building and they will just do what they can during three months and so basically work wherever they, wherever they want, but the company would not provide them with a building during this duration. I don't know how it how it happened, but I found it really shocking when I was hearing other companies saying, oh, two days a week, not more. And I think because of the COVID now, what you say could become a reality. It was not really thinkable before the, 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 the crisis because companies would not, would not already in this, in the case I presented, to have two days a week was a fight uh, for convincing the management. So, but now I think because of the pandemic, of course, the situation has changed a lot. And so I could maybe see companies going into that direction. I, it's, it's difficult because as researchers, we never study the future. We, we always study the present or the past. And so I, I, I cannot say with certainty whether firms will go that far to say, okay, we don't need buildings. People will have the responsibility to find a place where they work from. I think it would be, a, 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 from my point of view, an interesting thing to study, of course. Um, yeah, and I, I completely understand that when you say that the hot desking is pushing people away from the office. And I would even say that in some cases, not this one, uh, but I've, I've already hear, heard about it's pushing them out of the office and even out of the company because some people just can't stand it. And it's not always presented as a problem. That is, it's more, <laughs> I've heard this course, so it's more like a natural thing, which is a bit, which could be a bit shocking, of course, but, uh, and it's, it's not always, it's not always the case and it's not always clearly admitted, but of course, some people really have difficulties with this kind of new working environment. And what do you do with these people? It's, it's a very difficult question, but that being said in, in numbers, it's a marginal proportion, I think of, of the people, but we are some. Uh, in all these kind of project, there are departures and, and people leaving, of course. Um, we have uh, the last, uh, we don't want to be fired for that. And I don't think that is the intention either, uh, but it's true that no one will, uh, will get, I mean, uh, familiar with this, no, especially because it's not discussed, it's not presented. Uh, and I'm convinced, like Margaret has mentioned, that behind the letter, the certain digital is exactly that they don't want to push people to go away from the office. Uh, yes, of course, I'm talking in the, general. I, I yeah, don't know the letter, so I'm talking no. generally from what I've observed in my yeah, practice. Sure, sure. I'm not saying sure. it's the case. It's no, the case, of no, course. No. Uh, there is, there is a one question for you. Um, have you studied the relationship between flexible working environments and flexible working relationships? 
flexible working environment and flexible working relationship. So uh, it's a bit unclear to me what you mean by, because in my vocabulary, flexible working relationships would mean that an employer can work with employees, but also with freelancers, with independents, uh, subcontractors, and sectors. So it's a flexibility of the nature of the employment relations. I don't know if this is what you meant by the question. Uh, it's either that or flexibility in the managerial relations with the employees. So, so the, the, the first, if this is the first question, I, it's two different topics. So I have not seen that. That would mean that firms move to a new working environment, but also decide to resort more to an external workforce. And I think these are two separate topics. So I not in my mind, of course, if you rather meant uh, flexible work relationships between the employee and the managers, then yes, of course. Um, and I could, I could do another presentation about that. I think that w one main point is that it seems easy, like, okay, it's all resting on trust rather than control. And what you, when you meet just one manager, what he will tell you, well, I know my team, so I, I was already trusting some of them before and others I do not trust. <laughs> and, um, and, and and the control, it's very interesting also because there is this discourse of we don't need control anymore. And when you say that, employee says, some employees said, oh, I need I need to be controlled. I want, I want to know if I'm doing my job well. I want my manager to give provide me with feedback to give me objectives to tell me what I have to do. So there are the, the control is kind of part of what managers do in an organization. And so just saying control will disappear and trust will do everything. We from what we observed it it never happens like that. So it's kind of again a nice idea maybe. I'm not sure but uh, but control and trust were already present before and will be present after. Of course, there are changes is how it is exercised at a distance, but still the, there, there isn't much, much change, in fact, in the managerial relationship from this aspect. But I, I will, won't be longer because I could go on for still uh, another round on this question and, and there are maybe other questions. I see the chat, very long interventions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is a, a clarification. The question is about lower wages and less insurance benefits. No, no, I've I've never seen, I've never heard. Well, uh, I've heard of I have one thing related to wages, which is like more the 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 compensation for remote working. In this case, the insurance company, the trade unions, try to do that. They try to to. And try to negotiate for having compensation for when you are working remotely, whether you own heating, lightning, and electricity, internet connection, and so on. To, so to have something, and the employee said, "Don't do that. We want to to work remotely, and we don't care about. We don't want the the, the negotiations to be blocked because of that. And if we don't have a compensation, we prefer to to have remote work working still. But that was before the COVID, so maybe this has changed. This is just one example." But in this case, that was the only thing that was negotiated um, regarding. Yeah, it's not really wages; it's more like uh, like an uh, an uh, fiscal uh, addition. I don't know how to translate that, but uh, a, a, an advantage, a benefit. But wages do not really are not really re everything that relates to the work content so the work that people have to do remains roughly the same it's not affected by this project people still have to do the same set of tasks and some work conditions like the salary do not change neither at least in what i've studied i've but maybe it can be different in the in, in some cases i saw some i read in the chat someone about the spf finance but i don't know the case so maybe but usually, new ways of working is not about salary and wages. I would put it that way. Okay, uh, I I think that we come uh, to the end of this meeting. Um, I'm already proposing you publicly to have another meeting uh, because I think that what we have just done is uh, really successful. Um, and I would like to to discuss further with you uh, the third part of the BRICS bit. And it's behavior, because it's, I really think that is the concern that we have. How on your experience, especially in a structure on which the hierarchy is quite heavy, uh, this change of culture has been managed uh, 
successfully or not? Uh, what are the measures to be put in pay? Uh, what are the concerns? Uh, because what we face today is exactly that. Bricks are already decided, but it's no problem. Our colleagues of uh, IT service are work working wonderfully. Uh, this institution has been able to manage 100% of staff on telework, and now everything uh, was, works more or less uh, perfectly. So it's a really success. I know that we have, they have been working hard. Thank you again, a credit to them for this success. Uh, but when it comes to behavior, we are really far away for any kind of change. And I think that we have to deal with the pretension to change bricks and bits and not to change behaviors. And I don't think that it can be a, a recipe for any success story. Uh, so we, we will organize that. And uh, I think that uh, on behalf of all my colleagues, I thank you very, very much for your presentation. It was really focused on our experience. Uh, we were able through your slide to put names, uh, department, example, good and bad. Uh, so it's important also to, to show that what is presented today is nothing new. Uh, it has been already done in the past uh, because the commission has always the pretension to see to be specific to be unique uh, to be the only one doing things uh, and our uh, duty is to to invite experts like you to show that nothing is actually new and it's a really pity not to take on board the experience in the same situation in the, in, in the other in the other institution upon entities. So thank you very, very much again for that. And we will keep in touch for new success conferences. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for the for being there and, and following the presentation. I'm sorry I couldn't answer all the questions. It's, it's always a bit a bit difficult, but uh, yeah, I remained available for uh, for for advancing and maybe a last word. Uh, it reminds me when we, when we were um, uh, of something that I've read about an author saying that mechanically in these new work spaces there is as much potential for good things that's potential for bad things and so it's up to the people to see if they or emphasize the advantages or the disadvantages so i think it's a nice conclusion for a researcher like me neutral to say well you can take it both ways and take the positive see the the, the glass half full or, or half empty uh, and so a lot of of it comes to relations between human at works and and, and like 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 always maybe <laughs> Thank you very much again for having me there. Oh, thank you again. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. And, and thank you all colleagues for having attended our conference.